It's my great pleasure now to introduce our last Ed Talk, uh, talk speaker. Uh, you've heard this morning about attracting talent, retaining talent. Our last Ed Talk speaker is going to talk to us about how to develop talent and how they do this in their business. Last year, you'll remember at the New North Summit, uh, Oshkosh Corporation received the New North Workplace Excellence Award. This recognizes organizations that improve competitive advantage through innovative people practices. So we have today with us Mr. Wilson Jones, who is the CEO of Oshkosh Corporation. Uh, Wilson has been with Oshkosh since 2005 in various leadership positions, including president of Pierce Manufacturing. He has a unique perspective uh, on, ma on managing talent in a rapidly growing industry. So please join me in welcoming Wilson Jones from Oshkosh Corporation. Thank you, Chancellor. I appreciate those uh, kind words. You know, the uh, challenge we have today here, group, is they've told the guy from Texas you only have 15 minutes. And it takes me that long normally to say my name. So we may be a little late getting to lunch, but we'll work on it. You know, when we started our journey toward building and designing our culture for, for the future, a culture that not only attracts top talent, but it retains and develops that talent, we felt like there were three really important understandings that, that we had to really have a good uh, handle on. <clears throat> One is this quote. I think a lot of you have seen this quote. You've probably applied it to yourselves individually. But it also applies to our companies. I think Sharon did a great job of using the Oshkosh video. Thank you, Sharon. And, uh, and talking about the importance of telling your story. So what, what is your why or the purpose of your company? And for us, you saw a little bit of it in action today. Our, our purpose, our why, is all about making a difference in people's lives, our team members' lives, our customers' lives, our shareholders' lives, and probably most important, our community's lives. You know, when, when you look at the, the second understanding that we were looking for is if you want to have a people-first culture, you probably ought to have caring, genuine leadership, right? Well, we had to make a few adjustments with our leadership to be serious about this and focus on the right things and really taking good care of our team. The third thing that we focused on is understanding really what is the current state of our culture. I'll unpack that for you in a minute, but those three understandings we have a good handle on now and we're moving forward. You know, today we're in a really nice position. We have a positive long-term outlook in all four of our business segments. It's been a while. And if you watched our, our company progress over the years, there's not a lot of easy buttons in our company and that's okay with us, but we're about to be 100 years old. There's been six major junctions in our company's 100 years that we could have easily been gone as a company. Going back to our two founders who received 53 rejection letters on the two components that they introduced. Thank goodness they weren't willing to give up and they started a truck company to use those two components. Really neat history. I will mention today we're talking Northeast Wisconsin, which is a wonderful place. But we have 20, 28 locations around the world, 15,000 team members. And we're applying people first everywhere. It's a little different by region. So I'm going to share with you today kind of what we're doing, or a few things we're doing in Northeast Wisconsin. Going back to that quest to understand the current state, I'm going to rattle off a few what I would call disengaged statistics on a macro level. First of all, career development and learning are almost two times more important than compensation, benefits, and work environment. 71% of employees around the U.S. are not engaged. 60% of millennials are not connected to the company's mission. And seven out of eight U.S. employees, at some point during their annual year, they go home, they don't feel appreciated, the company doesn't care for them. Really, if you look at this, is this a failure of team members, a failure of employees? This is a failure of leadership. Leadership owns this. And I really don't think this is indicative of this area. We have good companies in Northeast Wisconsin, but these are things we have to pay attention to because companies that are experiencing this, team members are coming in every day and they're bringing their hands and they're bringing their head, but they're leaving their heart in the car. And that makes a big difference in performance for a company. Let's get off the, the negative and turn to the positive. 
Here's what happens when you have good engagement, good caring leadership. It just leads to better company performance. So important to understand the macro, but for us, more important to understand the micro. What's going on in the walls of your company? Really sp specifics of what your team members are saying. Through engagement surveys, Glassdoor. If you're not reading Glassdoor, you should. Some of those comments will hurt, but it'll tell you some things you may be missing. Focus groups, global town halls are all good avenues for listening and listening for understanding on what your team's looking for. Our team basically said three things. They want three things from us. They want to be engaged, developed, and connected. Those are the three things I'm going to talk most about today. On the engagement piece, our team members said we want a safe environment, the safest work environment possible, and not just physically safe, but mentally safe. You know, we have a divide in our country right now. We're not letting that in the walls of our company. We're going to keep that area safe. What we did, we turned to our team and said, you're empowered. Make your area the safest work environment possible. Well, we developed four safety levels, safety management system, and I'm proud to say today, six of our companies have achieved OSHA's highest safety certification. It's called VPP star status. Now, you didn't hear me say we have a metric saying we're going to lower our workers' comp cost per hour by X percent. We said we're going to work together as a team and have the safest work environment. But I'm telling you, the performance is there when you focus on the people and you enable them and empower them. Our workers' cost comp per hour went from 35 cents an hour three years ago to less than 17 cents this year. Now, if you're in heavy manufacturing, you know that's pretty close to best in class. Our survey also said with children, aging parents, we need more flexibility in the workplace. Let's listen to one of our success stories around workplace flexibility. I was in an extremely difficult situation which made it impossible for me to work out of my office. Our flexible work philosophy, which is grounded in, in mutual trust, was invaluable to my family and me. Um, I literally worked out of a library in a different city for over three months. Um, so what the leadership team did for me uh, meant the world. Linda Giordano is here today. Thank you, Linda, for making a difference in our company and for sharing a little bit of your story with New North. <laughs> I wish we had more time to talk about the engagement activities in our company, but what I will tell you is that good engagement leads to increased recognition. And we want to be a, a very humble company, so I'm not going to go through all these awards, very nice awards that we received this past year, but I am going to focus on world's most ethical. And I know our friends at Thrivener here, we're two of four companies in Wisconsin that received this award. It's from Ethisphere Institute, and it's, it's not easy to get when you're a global industrial working across 70 different countries in the world we're in today. We received this award. There's only 131 companies in the world that received this. We received it because of good engagement and team members' commitment to doing things the right way. We call it the Oshkosh way, a real credit to our team. Moving to the development side, our survey said we want avenues to acquire new or advanced skills through on-the-job experiences, exposure networks, and educational opportunities. So our goal is to make sure we're looking at their overall development and using all three of these elements to assist in their growth. Here's a good example of experience. Chancellor mentioned that we won the uh, Workplace Excellence Award last year for our Oshkosh Excellence Awards. This is continuous improvement to the next level. Our team members get those experiences across multi-functions, across multi-segments that they've asked for in their surveys. They do continuous improvement events, which helps our company. And then they enter those events into this awards program where the winners of the five different categories receive money from our foundation. They take that money and donate it back to the community charity of their choice. So again, they're working across those experiences, they're helping the company, and they're helping the community, making a difference in people's lives. From an exposure perspective, employee resource groups such as the Oshkosh Women's Network provide opportunities for mentoring, networking within and outside our company. And we've had good expansion on the education front. I had to hug my HR team after one of those presentations. They're a very vital part of our team, and we're glad you're here, and we love HR at our company. I had to give him a hard time about that, too. <clears throat> in 2014, we developed the U, your Oshkosh University. In 2016, we more than doubled the
the online class offerings in the U, leading to 75% of our salaried team members participating in at least one online course. And that's not the mandatory compliance courses that a defense contra contractor has to take. Let's listen to one of the success stories we've had around tuition reimbursement. Carrie, you need to get your MBA. You need to, you need to. And um, once, uh, when I did reach out to both Brad and Wilson, they were both excited that I was working on pursuing my development, and that's my personal development that nobody can take away from me. And they were very encouraging, and Brad has asked me about it multiple times. It's just amazing to have that kind of support from the leadership team. Imagine a lot of you do tuition reimbursement. It's a great program, but I hope you heard like the last two senses Carrie mentioned. She talked about Brad checked in on her several times. You know, the importance of that genuine caring leadership. Our leaders, Brad Nelson is the segment president in our commercial, Carrie is the manager of logistics. She does not report to Brad, but our leadership knows who's in what development areas and we check in on those, encourage them. Brad actually spoke to her MBA class. Again, you'll hear me say this a lot if you're around me, genuine caring leadership carries the day. Last few comments I would make on development is we want our team members to be successful in life. Remember our purpose? making a difference in people's lives. Our wellness program educates and encourages a healthy lifestyle by offering incentives for health screenings, tips on nutrition, as well as offering our team physical activity events to be involved with. We also work closely with Fidelity. They come in and help our team with financial planning classes. I'm moving to the connect issue. Our survey said we want to connect with each other, with our customers, and with our community. You know, lots of connection opportunities today. I see a lot of Twitter and Instagram and things that I have no idea of what they are and I'm dating myself now, but uh, what we're all about when we talk about connect is real human connection. That's what we're focused on. And here's a great example of real human connection. Everyone remembers the tragic day of 9-11. Well, our, our Pierce team has connected with the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. They do this annual stair climb. The National Fallen Firefighters Foundation is a wonderful organization that, take care of, that takes care of those families of the fallen firefighters. Over the last 10 years, Pierce has enabled $400,000 to go in and support this foundation. Let's listen to one of our friends at Pierce talk about this event. It gives the employees a chance, even if they're not in a fire department, an opportunity to do something for the firefighters that they're building these apparatus for. It gives them a, a connection to them. That emotional connection is something I don't know that I can describe for you up here today, so I'm just gonna invite you. In September, you should come up and go through the stair climb. It's part of the community. We'd love to have you. you see, you'll see how our Pierce team connects with one another. You'll see how they connect with our customers, the firefighters that are in this, and then how they connect with the community. And if Mike, Mark Murphy, I haven't seen him here today, but we have to kind of wait for the Packers to get their September schedule together, and then we'll publish the date. But we would love for, to, to have you come join us this year. It's a wonderful emotional experience. And speaking of emotional experience, again, that's what we're driving to on the Connect side, is that emotional connection to retain and grow our top talent. This is a neat story. We got together on a Saturday. There were team members with their, their families and their children. We packaged over 45,000 meals in a couple hours. We set up production lines, and we put together 45,000 meals to go in local food pantries. What was fun about that day is we had some children, we had some adults that had never participated in a community event like that to give back to those in need. A real emotional connection. And you that know me know I'm all about metrics. The metric on this is we had about 300 people participate this year. We're doing it again in April. I think we're gonna have about 700 people participate. That's a pretty good metric in my, in my mind. And again, it's that connection back into the community, making a difference in people's lives. And we do a lot in the community, I know all of you do. Northeast Wisconsin is fortunate to have all of you. This is a great place, and I'm probably the only one that's not from here. Uh, and I'll tell you, if you've been other places, this is a special place, and we need to take good care of it. And that's what we're trying to do around poverty uh, reduction, the POINT initiative. We've got 20 team members today helping nonprofits learn the tools of continuous improvement, helping them figure out ways to sustain good, good progress in certain areas. The metric on this, if there's nonprofits in, in here today that are looking for help, we've got 12 other team members that have raised their hands and they want to help with continuous improvement in that community world. So as I close, and just for the record, I'm under 15 minutes. Maybe the only one here today that's under 15 minutes. So if you're mad about lunch, get mad at them.
<laughs> you know, that's probably one thing I should mention too. This has been fun today, hasn't it? We should. And, and in the spirit of fun, when you leave today, make sure you tell Tim Bergstrom my socks are better looking than his. He always says he has better socks. Mine are better. You know, as I close, I, I, I do want to dial back, and I'll share you, with you my checklist, checklist I go through on a weekly basis. How's your leadership? Is it genuine, caring leadership? Do we, do we need to make some adjustments there? Does your team know and understand? More importantly, do they believe your why? Because our team... I'm so proud of them. They believe in making a difference in people's lives, and it's making a big difference in our company. You know, for us, it's, it's really all about engage, develop, and connect. And I really believe, and we're seeing this in areas of our company where we're really focused on that, it's leading to an inspired team, a team that is coming in to our facilities every day with their hands, their head, most importantly, their heart. And again, we're seeing that in performance. To me, a, a team like that, that's inspired, will consistently outperform with superior results. I wish you all the best of luck and, and great success next year. Thank you.